Yo, this is the Hobby Shop Podcast. I'm Philip. And Don. It's been a while, but we have come back. Uh, we've missed a lot of stuff over the last couple of months. Stuff like, uh, you know, like new movies and stuff like that. Uh, sorry, kind of rusty at this. It's been like, what, when's the last time we've done a recording? It was about maybe two months to three, three months. months. Something like that. At most, probably like yeah. three months. Uh, so... For forgive us for not kind of not having it yet. Uh, we'll kind of work our way back into it. Uh, so pretty much, I just wanted to get into this first. I saw the new Star Wars movie. Um, right uh, right now. Um, sorry, if, you know, I'm just gonna say spoilers just in case if I accidentally spoil anything. I'm gonna try not to, but ju- I'm just letting you know because I might fuck up and might accidentally spoil something. Um, I just want to get it right out. Just want to get that out of the way. Um, I really enjoyed it. It now everybody's saying that it fe- felt like old school Star Wars. I didn't get to see old school Star Wars in the theater. I didn't get to see the original version of the 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 uh, original trilogy. I started with the prequels. Yeah, I'm that. I I, I was that. Annoying nine-year-old who thought Jar Jar Binks was funny. Yeah. You were a shitty nine-year-old. Yes, I was. <laughs> uh, well, I don't think it... I thought, basically, it wasn't like, Oh, it's so funny. No, it was basically like, Eh. That, that stupid half laugh. Eh. I saw the movies as a kid, too, and I fucking hated it. Really? Yes. Oh, wow. The only parts I cared about were, like, anything with action. Other than that, I was half asleep half the time because it reminded me a lot of Harry Potter. It was just a lot of talking and nothing happened. Oh, uh, so you saw the Harry Potter movies first? Well, because my sister was really into them. And Wait, you you would have been, like, what, six, seven when episode one came out? Around that age. Yeah. And it was fucking boring. Yeah. So boring. Action. To what, well, to me being a nine-year-old, um, yeah, I didn't really care about the talking bits and... Um, it was, the, it was the action stuff I really liked. So, there for a while, I actually really liked the movie. Then I was showed the original movie. Not the original versions of the original movies. The DVD version. You know, with the sing, singing, sing, with the singing CG characters. And, yeah, with the, the, the slathers. Bleh, I can't even think. It just slathered CG all over the place. And, you know, Han stretching his neck to dodge a shot or some stupid shit. Um, I've never seen the original versions of the Star Wars movie, so I don't have that immediate attachment and hatred for the prequels. I don't have that attachment to the original, so I don't have the unbridled hatred for the prequels. Now, with that said, the prequels suck. They are not good movies at all. Um, Star Wars Episode 3 is probably the closest to being tolerable. You still have a lot of stupid dialogue, dumbass writing, uh, a heel turn that just comes at the flip of a dime. Now, basically, what this movie, what the new movie was trying to do was try to mend those wounds, trying to instill confidence into the fandom. Um, and you can imagine how, uh, picky uh, Star Wars fans are. I'm just saying this to get it out of the way that the the criticism I've heard everybody say about the new movie is there's a lot of fan service. A lot of fan service. A lot of callbacks and references to the old movies. Um, the, is that something that would bother you with like I don't know if you're like really into Star Wars or not. But no, I'm not. Okay, but can you would that bother you if it was like something something you were interested in, something that you haven't seen in a while and there was a new version of it? Well, I mean, I don't know if they're like over exaggerating the amount of fans. Are they? Do what? Are they over exaggerating their uh, comments, or are they actually meaning what their comments mean? Like, is there a, a lot of fan service like you're like they are saying? Yeah, there's a bit, bit. There's a lot of it. I mean, the plot is almost a re- retread of Star Wars. Uh, a New Hope. It's almost a retread of the first movie. You know, um, and 
a droid is lost on a desert planet having to find deliver a message to uh, somebody that had to get the message back to the rebels or something like that. Um, they find out the plans of a, you know, the creation of this giant, giant spear-like death machine. This time it's a planet, not a moon. Um, but there are, there's a lot of similarities to that movie. Um, I'm okay with that because, again, it's trying to re-familiarize people with Star Wars. It was trying to capture that Star Wars, you know, vibe. And I feel like they did. They, they, they did get that vibe where it felt like Star Wars. It felt like actual Star Wars. Um, you didn't have, like, a bunch of CG characters running around in, in you know, green screen land. Um, a lot of animatronics, a lot of practical effects. No. There is CG. There is a lot. Of, there is still a lot of CG, but they they do it uh, where they have to. They don't do it just to do it. Um, they use CG where it needs to be used to hide, to basically hide the strings. Of course, there's space battles and stuff like that. There's there's going to be CG in it no matter what. So you can't. So this might not appeal to those people who are, you know, practical effect effect purists who. Just hate anything CGI. I don't hate CGI. I just think it's been overused. I think they struck a good balance. There is two characters that are CG, but I can contribute that to one being a hologram. I'm not going to say what character that is. Um, and then there's like this white, wise old character. Not not the Yoda character, but you know she's kind of this wise character. Um, she's a she's a CG, or at least her face. CG. I don't know if the whole thing was CG because I think at times it was like a little person in a suit at times. But um, it looked good. If it if it wasn't, then it was just really good CG because I swore, swore it was. Um, I feel like there was like a like something physical there at some points, but at other points, obviously it's CG. Uh, I mean, if it's that complicated where you can't tell between the two, then I guess it's pretty good CG then. Yeah, uh, the CG is really good. Um, it has... So, the problem with the prequels that they always had was weak villains. Just, just villains you didn't give a shit about. Not the case in this one. Um, Kyro Ren, or however you pronounce his name, I got a feeling no one's going to call him that because of something that is in the movie. The Cairo Ren or Cairo Ren, oh, I don't know how to pronounce his name. It's freaking Star Wars name. Um, it, it's kind of like that one. It's kind of like this one guy on the line said, um, "What what happened to just Luke and Ben? Why does it have to be Qui Gon Jinn and and just all these ridiculous names? names?" Yeah. Um. The, but anyway, um, Kylo Ren is probably my favorite Star Wars villain um, since uh, Vader. Um, just looking at all of them, I'm thinking, is there any good villains besides maybe Palpatine, um, Vader? I don't count Boba Fett because he barely was on screen. So, so many people say he was like the greatest Star Wars villain. And he didn't do shit. Maybe he was in, like, the book or something. Yeah, he was in a lot of... I think he was in the book. He definitely had a lot of comic book appearances. But in the actual movies... He, he delivers Han Solo to Vader. That's it? The next movie, he gets, he is working for Java, and he just gets shot in the back and crashes into a hentai monster. That's basically what it is. It's just this tentacle monster in the sand. Okay. Maybe it was one of the sandworms from Beetlejuice. Um, but yeah, he he literally does nothing in the movie, so I, I never got the popularity. It's just I think it's mostly his design. In fact, he never said anything. I think I think he said like one word. Um, you know, it's not like it, it's funny. Again, that's the pre that's the defense of the prequels. In the prequels, nobody would shut the fuck up. There was actual quiet moments in the prequels. 
I mean, quiet moments in, in the original trilogy. And the prequels, they're just talking, 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 talking. Sorry, I'm getting bit by a mosquito over here. Um, let's see. Uh, staring back to the actual movie. Um, Kyro Ren is basically, I don't think I'm spoiling anything when I say this, he is a Vader fanboy. That is practically what he is. Uh, he... This is where I get iffy because this might be spoiler-ish. But I, it's not like any big reveal or anything like that. You just kind of realize that... Uh, and by the way, you people have been warned, if any slight, slight spoilers might bother you, you whatever, you might want to skip ahead. Uh, he's, he has anger issues. Like, he will throw these temper tantrums. That's literally what they are. They're temper tantrums. Because there's this moment where he doesn't get something he wants or he gets, or, you know, something a character says that kind of gets in his head. He uh, just goes eight shit on this computer dashboard. Like, he just, lightsaber, smash, smash, smash. The funny thing is they have two stormtroopers walking towards the room. Uh, something flies out of the room or something like that. And they're like, oh, turned around. Uh, and that's one thing I, I need to say about the movie. It's a lot more comedic than than other Star Wars movies, at least from what I remember. I don't remember the original trilogy being that funny. This was actually pretty funny, like like legitimately funny, not not trying too hard, Jar Jar Binks funny, uh, not funny, genuinely. Yeah. It's not trying too hard. It's legitimately funny. Um, I really like the character Finn, and there's a great twist on it. Uh, all I'll say for those who have not seen the movie is um, there's a little misdirection on the poster of the movie. You know, you have Finn carrying the lightsaber. That's a bit of a misdirection. I'm not going to go any further than that. Um, one thing I noticed about J.J. Abrams is he is really, um, he really likes his secrets. He really likes his twists and, and his surprises. Um, remember all the all the things he went out of his way to do to make sure nobody figured out Khan was in that last uh, Star Wars movie, Star Trek movie. No, I didn't really see the Star Trek movie. So. Okay, well, the villain from Star Trek Two. Okay. Uh, he he was really trying hard to make sure nobody knew that going in. Uh, he's really a stingler for his, his his you know for his movies not being spoiled. Um. So fuck you, everybody on YouTube who posts spoiler hashtags. I okay. Everyone's probably played Bat, Batman Arkham Knight by now, mm -hmm. so I don't have to worry about spoilers on that. But there's an asshole who actually spoiled the, you know, a major part part of the game. It said Jason Todd is the Arkham Knight in big bold letters, with with a you know a Robin R on the on the you know the hashtag. Or what is it called? Thumbnail? Thumbnail. I, how many times did I say hashtag? Like twice. Okay. Uh, thumbnail. The, the so little right on the thumbnail where you see it and you're just like, well, thanks. Thanks, asshole. Yeah. It's just... Mm. There, there's been douchebags on YouTube who's been doing it at Star Wars, too. Um, it's like, I don't get what's the point of putting the spoiler thing. You're just completely... It's just like, oh, look... It's an attention grab because you're putting spoiler in big bold well, letters. What's the point in clicking it, by the way? That's my question. What's the point in clicking it? You already you know. know. Yeah. What, what, what's the idiot on? What's the overreacting idiot on the camera going to do? It's like, oh, I'm going to tell you exactly what you just figured out by reading the name of my video. I hate. I hate when people do that. It's a clickbait, and it's just. It's the worst kind of clickbait. I don't know, YouTube's hit an all-time low on clickbait. Uh, uh, you mean, wait, you mean low on people doing it? Yes. Okay, so maybe there's been, I think there's like some, in, in, I think there's been something implemented uh, about that. I don't know. If a person watches at least five seconds of your video, I think it's yes. Because I remember, I think, I forgot who talked about it, but I think you have to watch either five to ten seconds of the video for the view to count. Okay. Like if they click it and hit back, the view will not count. Mm. But if you watch five to ten seconds, your view counts. Alright, so how does that equate to 
spot um, uh, clickbait. It doesn't. No. Oh. Okay. Then. Yeah, YouTube's just like we <laughs> okay. tried, but we don't really care. Um, that's kind of the motto of YouTube, isn't it? Uh, we could do something, but we don't really want to try. We'll just fuck with the interface to make it worse. Yeah. Oh, you got used to things? Well, too bad, motherfucker. <laughs> but change everything. You got used to it, and you know where to go, and oh, it's fucked. I remember, this is, I'll create back to Star Wars, I swear, but I, I just think, I remember like a few years ago where you could actually customize your page. Like, you can have your own background and different colored text, and the bubbles could be different colors and stuff like that. That was only free. You're talking about old free YouTube, I think? Like, old YouTube? YouTube wasn't around in old free. Uh-huh. I'm sure. Came around in 2005. I don't but know no, when it came but out. No, but it's a few years after that. It was like 2009-ish. I know there was a certain version of YouTube. Yeah, you could have animated backgrounds. I think you were able to have animated avatars, so I've heard. You I were able to do a lot of customization. Them. The one I'm talking about, you didn't. Maybe I don't know. Maybe you could have gotten that. It was more. It was more customization than it is now. Uh, this would be like going back to 2009, 2010, I think. Because uh, my background was like black, black, red text, and all that. Um, it was just mostly you can switch around the colors and add in backgrounds and. So it looks like a MySpace page. Yeah, it's basically. <laughs> I, I never really was on face uh, on MySpace, so I. I've seen. Just a little bit of my space, so yeah. Um, does that even exist anymore? For bands. Do what? It's for bands. My space is for bands. Yes. Okay. Why is it for bands? I don't know. Someone bought it out and turned it in. Oh, turn. Okay, changed it into something that. Okay. Yeah. So it's not even my space anymore. It's just. It's still named my space. Yeah, hold on, I gotta check that. Um, but real quick, getting back to. Star Wars, um, it's a more, it's more funny than, than the other ones. Um, there's moments where I, I'm like, I'm legitimately laughing in, in the theater. That barely ever happens. Because usually, I, you know, I'm in the theater, I'm in critic mode, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to, to I think you should critique it. something on the second watch. Usually what I do is my first watch, I try to enjoy it. And the second part, I try to, you know, critically analyze it because you'll catch things you may not catch before. Yeah. I tend, I tend to do it the other way. Uh, analyze it first time, then enjoy it the second time. Uh, Star Wars, I'm definitely seeing it again, so it I was so good. There's stuff, definitely stuff I missed. But, um, let's see. The action is great. I love how this, the, the, there's really one lightsaber battle. There's really just one. And it's none of this twir- twirling shit. It's none of that crap you saw in the prequels where they're they're more dancing than actual fighting. That is something that annoyed the fuck out of me rewatching those prequels. Because I rewatched all the Star Wars movies, all of them. Um. So yeah, that was really annoying. Just because yeah, it was cool with Darth Maul in the first one or fourth. Fuck it. Whatever. Uh, it, oh yeah, it was cool with Darth Maul. Which, by the way, people say Darth Maul, what a great character. Bullshit. Darth Maul literally did nothing except fight. And now granted, he's played by an awesome actor. Um, you know, he's more, not, okay, I say awesome actor. He can be an awesome actor, but he's one of those guys who just, he's, he's entertaining in every role. Um, you just have to give him something to do. He's the same guy who did, uh, Toad in X-Men. Uh, and he's done various other stuff. I'm pretty sure he he played the character in Hellboy. Um, I can't even remember his name, but he he was a he he he's uh, I think he's a motion capture guy now. But um, he's awesome in almost anything he was in. Um, and there's a little Star Wars reference in X Men where he grabs like a pole and twirls it, you know, twirls it. Um, but anyway, it was cool in in Episode One. But by episode three, it's just like, swing the goddamn sword. No, 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 no. You gotta be, you know, ballerinas on the battlefield. You have to be fucking Star Wars kid. Shit. I'm pretty sure Star Wars kid was from watching that shit, but whatever. It's just like, just swing the damn sword. Instead of, 
Yeah, this ballerina. Got to be shit. flashy. Yeah. Um, and that's one thing they got. Well, that's one thing they got right in the miniseries, Clone Wars. Uh, yeah, there was a little bit of that, but it it seemed like everything had a purpose in the fight scenes and in Clone Wars, not the movie Clone Wars, but the miniseries. The uh, who the fuck did that series? It was uh, Gany Tarakoski. I think that's how you pronounce it. Close to his name. I don't know how you pronounce G it either, but... Gany Telekoski. The guy who's in Samurai Jack. Yeah, just say it like that. It would have been easier. <laughs> uh, which is on Netflix, and I'm going to have to watch it. Um, anyway, I really like the action. The music is phenomenal. It, I think a lot of it is the, the original Star Wars score. Um, you, you know, basically, they went out of their way to erase the prequel. They didn't reference the prequel. Some people told me they did. I didn't catch any of them. Um, they went other way not to reference them. Um, and like someone told me, Jar Jar Binks makes an appearance in the movie. Nowhere in the movie. I'm just, like anybody cares, but like anybody cares. I'm just saying, <laughs> no Jar Jar Binks. Spoiler. Uh, Maybe he's in the background and you didn't see him. Oh God, like he is in the freaking one. one the DVD version of the original movies. Yeah. Oh god. Uh, maybe it's more. Uh, by the way, watching this, you can tell it's not a George Lucas movie. You can tell George Lucas is not directing this. Um, you can, you know, you can tell from the performances, the, you know, the camera angles, the just everything. It just does not feel like George Lucas. And also, they're not afraid to have characters die. That's one thing you never saw. Really, think of a character that died in Star Wars besides Boba Fett. Yeah, you know, besides Vader and Palpatine. Well, I mean, I'm saying as of now, it seems that more and more characters seem to be dying in more series. Yeah. But I, I'm just saying, they, they were a little... Besides, like, the main villains, did, was there any hero that died? Not really. I mean... No, no, no. I'm thinking, no, yeah. You know, Yoda, um, I think Lando does. No, Lando didn't die. He was in the last movie. Um, but yeah, Yoda died. Ben Kenobi died. That's about it, actually. Okay, in the prequels, you saw more of that where you saw, like, main characters die. Yeah, yeah, you had, like, this whole genocide thing going on in the third one, but... You know what I mean. Fucking... Revenge of the Sith. Um, you have this whole, this whole genocide thing, but it's characters you no know, one cares about because we never saw them in any scenes prior. Ooh, Mace Windu died. Did anybody really give a fuck about Mace Windu? He was a badass in the animated miniseries. No, notice a pattern here. If it Star Wars could be awesome, not directed by George Lucas. When it's in the hands of someone else. Yeah. Him as consultant, that's probably his best position. He's good. He's he's like Spielberg. He's better as a producer than an actual director. Um, and that comes from somebody who who is a Spielberg fanboy. I I love a lot of Spielberg's films, but I, even I'll admit he's a better producer than director. Um, yeah, I hate AI, and that's a Spielberg film. I fucking hate it. Um, anyway. I never saw it. It don't. It's, just, just watch the NC, uh, just watch the South Critics review of it. Wait, was that the one where he was supposed to work with Kubrick? Or someone? Mm hmm Was he able to work with someone on that film? Because the little kid robot? Oh, yeah, he worked with uh, Stanley Kubrick. Um, I was it? No, it was Kubrick. Yeah. Um, you know, Shining, tw um, 2001, stuff like that. Um, yeah, that was a joint thing. Like, like he died during, like, the making of the movie or something like that. Um, I still don't like the movie. You can throw, throw in, you can throw in probably one of the greatest directors of all time. I still don't like the movie. Maybe he didn't really do anything with it. Maybe it was all, uh, what's his name? Spielberg? Spielberg? Probably. I don't know the percentage of stuff. I don't know who wrote what. I I didn't even know he had any association with it. 
in, in Into Just Now, but um, no way. I think Nostalgia Critic said something about it. Yeah, he talked about yeah, it. Yeah, okay. Um, so, yeah, I didn't know until that video. I just forgot about that. Anyway, the new Star Wars movie. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go see it. It's a lot of fun. It's it's not it's not as bad as you know. It's nowhere near as bad as the prequels. Um, you know, it's much better. Uh, I guess you got somebody fresh in there who is a Star Wars fanatic. J.J. Abrams loves Star Wars. If you watch the new Star Trek movies, they're just Star Wars movies. Um, just without like just without lightsabers. Um, and the funny thing is, I love how they didn't update anything, but like uh, in the Tie Fighters and stuff, stuff like that, and and any of the ships. It all looks like it was still made in the seventies, like you 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 know, future the future of the seventies. Um, like they still have like analog uh, control pads and stuff like that. They still have like, you know, it's none of this science sci-fi bullshit where it's just like. Uh, they put their finger up in the air and just like, vroom, 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 vroom. and like a hologram of a keyboard pops up or something oh. stupid like that. Just, it's science! It's a science thing. Um, like, don't question it, it's science. But what is, it's a science. It's not science, it's a science. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, I really liked the movie. I really enjoyed it. Um, I feel like it might be film. To, it might be the film, uh, the movie of 2015. I have not seen every movie in 2015, so I can't even claim that. I need to go watch um, Age of Ultron and other movies. Can't wait for the Deadpool movie. Uh, 2016 looks like it's going to be an awesome year for movies. Uh, you get the new... Um, you know, you get Civil War and all the, all these movies that people have been waiting for, the Deadpool movie and stuff like that. I'm sure a lot of people are looking forward to Batman v Superman. Uh, I'm not, but um, but um, there's a lot of, lot to look forward to. Now moving on from that, uh, the cat. Sorry. <laughs> Why is your cat? Because that door's dog. never been shut since he's been here. Go open the door real quick. No, he's, he can go suck it. All right. It's not like he's um, loud and squeaky and really annoying like a small dog. Yeah. Okay, it's not even picking him up. Yeah, you're fine. Um. Anyway, moving on. Sorry about that long pot. Ah, oh, fuck. I was just edited it out. Um. Anyway. What's uh, is there anything, anything new new with you? Anything uh, you've watched or played or anything? I have not watched anything new. I've been exhausted from any movies. But for games, all I've really played is just Undertale and Lisa. Do what? I've only played Undertale and Lisa the Painful. What's, uh, I don't know either one of those. Wait, Lisa, is that the 2D? Is it like a 2D retro style game? A 2D platformer, a lot like Undertale. Okay, I don't know RPG. what Undertale is, but... It's a simple RPG. Okay. Wait a minute, doesn't that have like a lot of... I, think, no, I might be thinking of something else. I thought that had like a lot of references to like... Is there... Okay, I might be thinking of the wrong game. But is this like a comedic game? Is there like lots of jokes and stuff like that? There is comedy with good amount of drama. Okay. I feel like that's a game that made like some references to like video games awesome, but I don't know. That might be a different game. It's made certain references to a certain amount of people, but I don't think it did to video games awesome. Uh, it, I think there's like a character that says his name's Fraser or something like that. Which is which is the guy from Video Games Awesome. Like I think that uh, that's something like heck, you know, like I'm Fraser and this is Becky or something like that. Well, there's like a lot of characters with names in the game, so it so could it, have been one, but I, I didn't get the reference because I don't know who it is. You, you don't watch Video Games Awesome, so um, yeah, that might have been the game. So I might have seen a little bit of it. Uh, they did a they did a let's play of it. Now what was the other one? That was Undertale. Undertale. I don't know that one. 
thought I've showed you that one before. Wait, is it? No, that one hasn't come out yet. It yet has it? No. Is it the one with like the? Oh, shit. Describe it. It's got the little yellow boy, the rejected Simpson character. Oh boy. You might have shown me it, but I probably don't remember. It's like a little blob face. I can't really describe it. You'd have uh, to see I, it. I would just have to look at it. Okay. You'd have to look at it. It's as simple as that. So what kind of game is it? It's a RPG slash bullet hell. Bullet hell? Yeah. You know, like... Is it like Super Meat Boy? No. That's okay, a, that's, that's a platformer. It's okay. nothing like a platformer. I, I, I'm thinking what, you die over and over and over again or something like that? No, bullet hell is simply just... Uh, you play those little things with little spaceships and stuff kind of like flies at you and you got to avoid it usually. Oh, kind of like, like asteroid or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something okay. like a little bit like that. Uh, but you don't don't shoot, you just dodge it. These are like what um, uh, Steam games. Yes. Okay. Uh, that I only get just because I think you play almost everything off of Steam, don't you? Like you get mm, most of your games from Steam, right? I look, I watch a let's play of it, then I you know listen to a little bit of review, I look some more, I do a little bit of research, and then I debate about buying it. All right. Um, it's not like it's not like back in the day where you just had to go off the back of the box. And you're just like, fuck it. Going this to... looks cool, and, the, and you regret it. Yeah, you look at the cover, and the cover looks nothing like the game or something like that. Oh wow, this looks so awesome! And then you play it, it's like, meh. Shitty ass. Have you ever seen off. some of the old Mega Man covers? You you probably know about the famous the famous one from from the first game, where it's like this guy in a yellow blue and yellow jumpsuit with a gun. They're, I'm just saying, all the covers are ridiculous. There's one where, I'm not even kidding, um, Mega Man's shooting this robot in the balls. And has like this, this weird smile on his face. Are you sure it wasn't like a Photoshop? Editor? No, no, that was the, I, I had this game. This I had this game. This was what was on the box. Uh, I think this was like Mega Man 3, I think. It was either Mega Man 2 or 3. Um, no, it's real. I'll show you. I'll show you it. I'm probably not. No, I don't have it anymore. But um, I found a lot of my old N sixty. A lot, a lot of my N uh, NES games. I just don't know where I put them. Fuck somewhere around here. But anyway, um, it's a real cover. Uh, it. No, I should say it's not like it actually. It just looks like that. Like he's just shooting a robot. Um, Mega Man just looks weird in all those, in all those covers. Um, they, they get the coloring right. They get the overall design right. Um. Just, is it the artwork? Yeah, it's just weird, just, just funky artwork. Um, and I've, I've seen some weird artwork from, especially from the NES days. Um, you should, uh, you should see the, um, Oh God, there's this video on YouTube where they go through all, all the most ridiculous, um, uh, the, the most ridiculous NES cover art. Should be all games overall. I'd be more amusing. What? There's been some shitty cover arts throughout the game? entire yeah. Yeah, all of gaming. Um, I play. I've been trying to play some of the some of the bigger AAA titles. Uh, I played a little. I played the first couple hours of Metal Gear Solid Five. Fucking great game. Fuck you, Konami. Damn it. I don't get my money. It's the last. It. I know a lot of people would say this. Oh, it's the last time I ever buy it. They're going to poop out another one. Probably. It? If they're going the route they're going, I don't think. They're not interested in making AAA type games anymore. Go get a Kinjinko machine with your AAA game. Yeah. They did that with fucking Castlevania. In Silent Hill, I think. Uh, Pachinko! The way of the future. Hey, if they, I guess if they make money off it or whatever, what the fuck I know. The side, the main story will be the side story, and the main story is the Kinjinko machine. <laughs> you have to pop in a certain amount of money to get the full, get the full cut scene. Yeah. Um, but one thing, uh, they pretty much took the crit. You probably remember the criticism people had for Metal Gear Solid 4 that it's mostly cutscene. There's just 
It's like hour long cutscenes and stuff like that. It didn't bother me because it, it was like the the finale. It was like for as far as we knew at the time, it was going to be the last Metal Gear Solid game. So they, I wanted closure to everything. I wanted, I wanted the story. I'm like, bring on the cutscenes. Um, I'm pretty sure Jeremy James is the same thing, but uh, I, I, I have the same opinion. I love the cutscenes just because I wanted to see how uh, it all ends for these characters. Metal Gear Solid Five barely has any cutscenes. It's all, it's more gameplay, which is which is good. It's a little bum. It's a, I'm a little bum just because it's like. Metal Gear, come on. Metal Gear is known for this kind of stuff. I want, I want full story. Who knows? Maybe this was a Konami thing, and Kojima wanted to do way, way more with the story and stuff like that. Again, I've only played the first couple of hours. The first 20 minutes of this game is insane. Not hard or anything like that. It's literally insane. Flaming, flying whale. Why? Because you have this pyrokinetic guy who makes things out of fire, and just like they really dropped you into the weird Metal Gear shit that you know, it, you know, Metal Gear Solid is known for its weirdness. It's known for some, the the mind fluff moments, you know, psychic mantis on, on the first game, you know, reading your memory card and stuff like that, and you had to unplug your controller and plug it into the second into the second player slot to beat him. Because he would just predict all your moves, so you unplug it, you unplug it, and plug it into the other slot. Hmm. It's a clever way to that. That was just out of the box thinking. You know, that's why I love Metal Gear Four. Um, you know, you always had like these wacky villains and stuff like that. The, you know, like Metal Gear Solid Three had like, you know, the pain, and he like you weaponized B, the fear and stuff like that. Um, Metal Gear Solid 4, it was even more crazy. But, so, Metal Gear has always had that that weird factor. But you never was bombarded with this much weirdness all in the span of 20 minutes. There, the opening scenes, I don't, you know, if anybody gets mad because of spoilers, this, fuck you, it's the first 10 minutes of the game. Um, you wake up in a hospital after the events of Ground Zero, I'm not really going to go into it. I think I explained it before on the show. Uh, you're in like a helicopter crash. You know, Snake's in a helicopter crash. He's in a coma for nine years. Wakes up in like 1982 or something like that. Um, and they have this thing where it has you pick a new face. I'm like, uh, but I want to be Snake. This, this is awesome, but I, I want to be Snake. I don't want to be somebody else. I don't, it's still Snake, but it's just like, I don't want a different one. I want Snake. Uh, but as you're switching it, you pick your new face. The doctor gets garroted. Yeah, a guy comes up with a wire and, like, garrots him. I don't know what the word is for. Uh, take a wire and cut it into his throat until he dies. I don't know. Hitman kind of shit. Okay. Uh, he, he died. A guy who's been planted in the hospital who basically went for you to wake up. You know, gets you out of the room after you and after uh, you have being assassinated by this woman, who gets a vis gets eviscerated with fire and, and jumps out a window. Yeah, it's the pyro pyro guy. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, you're like crawling under beds. People are coming in to kill Big Boss. They're hunting for him. So you have to sneak around. You're hiding under a hospital bed. Oh, they're all like finding the signature. Oh. Like we must wait till he wakes up to kill him. No, they they just found out where he was, so it's like okay. They fortunately enough, he woke up in time when we found him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I don't know actually. He wakes up and he keeps falling back to sleep and stuff like that. He keeps coming in and out. Maybe he's got So it could be like months. It could have been months between him coming out of his coma and him finally getting out of bed and all that and all this shit happening. It could have been any amount of time. It's just they had to find where he was. I think this was like it was like a British or French hospital or something like that. Anyway, there's this guy, you know, begging for his life, but the soldier kicks him down, shoots him. He falls to the ground and his face is facing you. It's the guy you picked. It's the face you picked when it was asking you to pick a new face. Hmm. And you're just seeing other people die, and they're all the face. They were all the options. That right in the first ten minutes. 
boom, mind fuck. Not a big mind fuck, but it's like, oh wow. So that's the point. So that was what the point of it was. Because I was like, what's the point of that if I'm not even going to do it? I think you can customize your soldiers later on. When you're recruiting soldiers, I think you can customize them. I have not gotten that far into it. I just saved like your your buddy from a part from Portable Ops and Peace Walker. I don't know what his name is. Um, I didn't play the PSP games. I went from four to five. So mm -hmm. anyway, I haven't gotten very far anyway. So far, I like the characters. I like uh, I like Revolver. I like Revolver off a lot. Um, I, I don't know if he's Revolver yet, but he you know it's off a lot. Uh, he kind of sounds like you know. I think it's the same voice actor who played him in 3, you know, the younger version. But his voice sounds kind of like the older one from, from one, from 1, 2, and 4. So that's cool. I like the characters, love the gameplay. Um, the graphics are fucking amazing. They are amazing. Better than the Xbox One. I don't know. I, I don't know. I haven't looked at X Xbox One games. They look great, too. Uh, were you really expect me to say that? I don't know. I was expecting something like that. I don't know. My, my hatred for, for the, the Xbox is wane. Since, you know, they didn't do all the stupid shit they were wanting to do a few years ago. What was it a year? I don't even remember. Um, I don't know. I, I'm really enjoying it. Um, although I've been playing more Grand Theft Auto 5 on the PlayStation than I have, uh, um, Metal Gear. Grand Theft Auto 5 on the PlayStation 4 is awesome. It's, it's, it feels like a completely different game when you're playing in first person. Anyway, getting off of that, how, well, how are we on time? Because I spent forever on that. We're fine. Alrighty. We're just going to jump into some old questions that, we've answered these before, but it's been but the episode didn't get uploaded, and trust me, that's changing. Um, we're going to try to upload these as you know as quickly as we can after recording them. So uh, hopefully we don't miss people's questions again. Um, so we're going to answer some old, some old ones. Um, don't worry, we don't remember what our we probably don't remember what our answers were. Yeah, uh, opinions change. Is it picking you up as well as it is me? Yes. Okay. Um, so we're just gonna. I might fuck up some names, but I'm just I'm gonna read them. Uh, Black Kent. Fuck. Can you not read? Yes, I can read. Then read it. What does that say? Then you can't read it. Black Ken Kenkai. Black Kenkai. Black Kaniki. Kaniki. I Thank cannot you. read that. I can read! <laughs> okay. Rank your top five anime manga of all time. Anime and manga. I don't read manga, so I, I really don't know on that one. I'm going to let you go first because I, I already know one. How about you each number? You share, you know, one by one. All right. Um, so, starting from least. Do you have or... any manga, though? That... No. Okay. If we had Robert here, he would be able to. All right. I think this was, yeah, it's with in Robert in mind, so... Anyway, number five. <laughs> I was supposed to have to think about this. Uh, I just thought it was like the top three. Uh, I My top five would be Dragon Ball. Oh, shit. Okay. Black King... King Kini, Whatever. Fuck it. Black Kaniki? Black Kaniki. Uh, what's the Kaniki? Mm -hmm. Okay, um... Rank your top five anime of all time. Number five for me would be Dragon Ball. Dragon, Dragon Ball particularly. The, you know, not Dragon Ball Z. I love Dragon Ball Z, but I think Dragon Ball is a lot better. It's a, uh, you know, it's a lot more fun to watch this because I like adventures. I like uh, adventure stories and stuff like that. Uh, it has, you know, great fantasy elements. Um, it actually focuses on martial arts. You would think something like Dragon Ball Z would be all over that because it's a fighting anime. But no, they know It's more, it's key blasts. And look, I love Dragon Ball Z, like I said, but I love that Dragon Ball actually, you know, 
focuses on martial arts, um, I highly, I ha- highly recommend the tournament episodes. Yeah, I know. Usually tournaments are usually filler. Uh, tournaments are usually done very poorly in, in shonen shows. Uh, but I think Dragon Ball did the best uh, because there was actual um, development in all the characters and stuff like that. It actually serves its purpose. Uh, but the the fight between um, Roshi and Goku in the finals is one of the best fight scenes I've seen in anime uh, in that at that time. There's obviously there's better fight fighting scenes in anime now because you know better animation and stuff like that. But at the time, there there was nothing really like that. Um, and I liked the idea of. of the Kamehameha wave and stuff like that, where it's not like, oh, it's key. It's no, it's. Well, I think they still call it key, but they looked at it more like chi, more like, um, you know, chi chakra, whatever word you want to use. Um, more of a uh, spiritual thing. So, um, also, you saw it a lot less. So, whenever you saw Goku do the Kamehameha wave, it was a big deal. Uh, it's not like in, again in Dragon Ball Z where it's just constant uh, energy blast. Um, the closest it ever got to that was like the last couple episodes. And of course, some idiots honking instead of going through their door and knocking, and causing dogs to bark. Anyway, um, yeah, I really, I've always loved Dragon Ball. I think it it was a fun show um, with with great memorable characters. Uh, if you don't have the time to watch the entire show, check out some of the movies because my the criticism of those movies is it's just a show, just abridged. But um, they're well they're they're well animated, they're well written. Uh, I wish that asshole would just get out of the car instead of just oh god. Um, okay, it's not a big deal. Yeah. Okay. Um, Anyway, great characters, great animation for the time. Um, yeah, you got a lot of stilted shots and stuff like that, but hey, it was like, what, fucking 1987? Hey, people still do stilted shots with Flash. Oh, so yeah, they no do. Complaints. Like, like uh, yeah, they still do. Even fucking Tack on Titan does. Um, oh, God, I recently watched... I've been trying to watch Berserk. I've only gotten, like, one episode in. Which one? The the, old the, the or original the, one. The original. I don't want I don't want CG bullshit inserted into it. I okay. want to see the original but I mean, show. It still does. It's still faithful to. It's more faithful than the original with the CG. I mean, I'm, it sucks, but I I don't know. Budget. I've seen clips of the original Berserk compared to the the uh, newer one. I want nothing to do with that. It's like a uh, Ghost in the Shell 2.0. I want nothing to do with that version. Because I don't want it to be, you know, color corrected. I don't want it to be, um, I don't want CG just thrown into it. I'm sorry, the, the color correction thing with, with Ghost in the Shell still irritates me. Because it's like, it lost all the atmosphere it had. It looked way too warm. And, you know, it just kind of went against the tone of Ghost in the Shell. Not talking about Ghost in the Shell. Talk about Berserk. I've been trying to watch a few episodes of Berserk, but it is constant steel frame shots. Um, doesn't make it any less well written or anything like that. I, you know, I assume it's well written because people fucking love this show. I mean, I don't blame it for you know stilted shots. I'm gonna... <laughs> they use a lot, though. I, I think because they had like a shoestring budget. Probably because I mean to do Berserk, that's never gonna happen. Yeah, um, the. I, I need to get further in before I say really anything about Berserk. Um, but going back to, to Dragon Ball, uh, it, it's just, I can't, I, I can't uh, overstate, overstate enough that, um, I can't say enough that how fun the show was. Um, God, those animals just won't stop. Now the cat's doing it again. Anyway, uh, God, I wish she would shut up. <laughs> ah, fucking dogs. Ruining our podcast. Anyway, um, oh, well, fucking <laughs> look at the spike there. Yeah. Um, anyway, 
Dra- I don't know what else to say. Dragon Ball is awesome. Uh, that's my number five. What about you? Gurren Lagann. Gurren Lagann? Or is it Tengen Top and Gurren Lagann? Huh? Isn't it Tengen Top? I only heard Gurren Lagann. Unless you're talking about some different version. No, 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 no. It's the same version. I think that's the whole name, isn't it? Probably. I, I just saw Gurren Lagann. I think it's just easier to remember as Gurren Lagann. Um... It, I don't know. There's some anim- anime that just have like these real funky titles, but people just kind of shorten them. Well, I mean, yeah, you don't want to say the full fucking name. Um, there's like stuff like uh, like gibberish. Just, I, I'm trying to come up with an example, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. Samurai uh, Pizza Cats. Samurai Samurai Pizza Cats. Sorry, I love that. Sh- I love that theme song. It's so stupid, but I love it. Uh, anyway, Gurren Lagann. I fucking love that show. Yeah, it's all nice and everything. It's perfect and it's just, you know, highly entertaining. What do you want in anime? Um, it's done by the same people who did, um... Uh, Fully, Fully, I forgot the studio uh, name. Oh, the big one. The big one they did was... Was uh, Evangelion. Was it Trigger? No. No, I um, believe it's something like Gynex. I think, yeah, I think it was Gynex. Gynex, Before yeah. they split up Some. Something happened. Yeah, they split up at some point. It's kind of confusing. I think we've gone into it before, but um, and anybody who's listened to this, who's listened to any of the old old shows, no, I am not a fan of Evangelion. I think I just think it it, it was trying so hard to be. We're not be talking the, about that right now. We're talking about girl. And I, I, I know. I'm just saying it tried so hard to be the Bible of anime. That's basically what I was trying to. It was trying so hard to be the Citizen Kane of anime. Anyway, going from that, going from something that was like super serious and kind of boring, to something as fun as Gurren Lagann. Different writer. Do what? Different writer. It was a different writer? Yes. Okay. So that's, I, I throw it all in the same thing because it's the same studio. But going from stuff like that to to um, to Gurren Lagann, it's just it, it's whiplash inducing. I think they did Fully Cooley. Yes, they I did. don't know if they did Fully Cooley first. Did they? Okay, I'm assuming that the person... The, I'm assuming the same people uh, who may, who worked on those worked on Stockings and Panties. I'm pretty sure they worked on that too, which is nine kinds of stupid, but it's also really fun. It's also really fun, really funny. I don't know, it's like too stupid and raunchy for me. It's it is? Good, yeah. That's the kind of stuff I love. I the the thing is I think Pan Pizza put it put it best that it's funny it just so happens to be raunchy it's not it's not that it's raunchy that's not why it's funny it's just funny it's you you get what I'm saying right yeah. it's, it's not the raunchy that's funny it's actually it's, the, it's the like writing funny. yeah um or at least the setup to the raunchy humor um it's not not one of my favorites but I do enjoy it. Um, I actually have only seen like four episodes of it, but um, it's one of those. It's a very required taste. Guru Long, I think anybody can watch Guru Long as long as they're a lot, you know, as long as they're okay with the kind of show it is. It's wacky, over the moon villains, uh, over the top fighting, it's and fucking just wacky. The pa- show. you know the power of. Uh, it's a cartoon. That's it that's it. That is it's a cartoon. Like you were literally watching, like a little kid play write, with their toys. Play with their toys, yeah. Yeah. All right. What were you going with that? Well, I mean, I was just saying, like writing this. Writing it, it, it was like it was written by a child. Well, that's what it appeals to. It appeals and to that child. Well, well, the thing is, we we're not saying that it's like poorly written or anything. Um, just, we're, we're just saying it has the enthusiasm of a child. Pretty much. It, it has like that energy that you just don't get from from um, from a lot of anime, because especially at the especially serious. at the time. Yeah. They're being super serious. Didn't this come out around the same time Death Note came out? Which was so over the top serious, it became funny. Too satirical to be. I mean, too serious to be serious. So it's satirical. Yeah. It's, so over the top, the fucking chip. Um, I'll always remember that about Death Note. The fucking chip. Like, I'll take a chip and eat it. 
It's hard to say whether or not they were trying to be serious or they were trying to be funny. I, th- I think it's pretty sure. It's, it's funnier funny. if they were serious. It's funnier if they were serious. Uh, anyway, um, I fucking love love how over the top the characters are. They're not poorly written. I mean, they might be cliched, but they're well. It's common now that really puts it together. Yeah, uh, now that that's the the older guy. The older guy. The fucking guy. love that character. Over the top, just just over the top manly, dude. Just just like this. I've seen a million. They are angry. Somebody's here. They are <laughs> highly enraged. Okay. Do we? What do we do? Just let them calm down. They calm down. Okay. I'll edit that bit out. Uh, I'm trying to say more than it's just. Uh, I'm trying to say more than it's just fun. Uh, it is, but there is more to it than that. But even when I say that, I feel like I'm overstating it. Don't go, okay, don't go into this expecting something, um, don't go into this think, thinking you're going to see something like, some, some great writing. Don't come into your and looking look for great it's writing. It's like a cheesy motivational speech. But think about, yeah, that works. Combined with Power Rangers. Yeah. Power if you, Rangers are cheesy motivational If you like Power Rangers or, um, I don't know, what else would you compare it to? If you, you like Power Rangers, like yeah, it, it's the show that brought mech anime uh, back. Uh, I know there was mech anime, you know, there was mech anime before, you know, between, say, uh, Gundam Wing and this, because I'm not a big fan of Gundam Wing, but would you say that was like, the, before Gurren Lagann, would you say that was like the last, like, big, like, the last great mech anime? When was it? It was like yeah. ninety. It was like ninety eight, ninety nine. What was all in that time period? Um, oh shit. Um, now I, I'm thinking more about when they came out in America. So, but uh, in Japan, I think in ninety nine, Trigun, Cowboy Bebop, um, Outlaw Star, I think came out the the following year. The Big O. Um, uh, the Big O. I would just throw The Big O as, like, one of those less great mech anime. Uh, but since, like, 99, 2000, I don't think there really was any great mech anime until uh, Gurren Lagann. At least, on we- at least on the west side. Yeah, because I didn't see anything, like, mech genre-wise during those times. Yeah, there was a few things, like, like um, what was that stupid one with the surfing robots? I know what you're talking about. It popped on Adult Swim, didn't it? Yeah, it was on Adult Swim it for a while. It didn't last very long. It, uh, eight, eight, even seven or something like that. I don't know. Like it, it was silly. Uh, I didn't watch very much of it, so sorry if apparently it got amazing after the fifth episode. Um, there was stuff here and there. Gundam was just ugh at the time. Gundam Seed, Devil O, just terrible. Uh, although I wait no, ter- uh, Double O might have came out after Gurren Lagann, but um, it Gurren Lagann is n- how would you describe it? Like a needle full of adrenaline in the eye. It's basically what it is. It's just hyped up, me- hyped up mech. It's just mech. Everything awesome about. I might be spitting on you, am I? No, sorry. No, no. It's just it's fun. I it, believe that. It, it, it's, it's really fun. Energized everything awesome about mechs. Just not, don't expect anything smart from it. Exactly. It, just just kinda put yourself in the mindset of a hyped up, you know, hyped up ten year old. Uh and you're like trying to do the Chrome Buster from Big O. Um That's what one of the things about it is it's just pure unadulterated fun. No whiny characters, no, no... Seymour. Do what? Seymour is a little whiny. He started out that way, but he evolved. And that's one thing a lot of them can't claim, that their characters actually evolve. Um, but he, you know, he actually evolves and comes, kind of becomes kind of a cool character. Um, but you don't have, like, your, your Sasuke. You don't have, like, your... You're just like, I'm pissed in the world and just, you know... You know, cutting into my skin kind of bullshit. Yeah, the the just kind of. I think that's the best best reference. 
you know, none of that Papa Roach bullshit where it's just like <laughs> over the top emo bull crap. It's just, you know what, it's a fun. This is basically how they looked at it. It's giant robots. Let's have some fun. Fuck it. That's basically it. Mm-hmm. All right, number four. Sorry, I kind of took over your thing there. It's all right. I just fucking love that show. Hmm, number four. Uh, I can't even think of one. I think my number four is Outlaw Star. Um, man, over the variations, I'm going to have to put... Kind of want to speak a little louder. I'm going to go with Madoka Magico. Madoka? Okay. Yeah. Um, I couldn't get past a certain point on that show, so yeah. that... I mean, it wasn't for me. I mean, I want Full Metal to be on here also, but it's like the four slots, like a battle. There's like a lot of shows oh. that are right there. That's like Full Metal, Madoka, and One Punch Man are all right there on the four slot. Um, I've been wanting to kind of try. I, I've been wanting to watch uh, One Punch Man, um, but uh, I just haven't gotten around to it. Madoka Magica, I just. I get what they were doing, and I respect what they were doing. You know, trying to take a, you know, a new twist on on, on the, on the magical girl, genre. Now, there's probably going to be somebody who said, "Well, this, you know, this did it first. I can't think of something that, that, that as popular as Matoka, do uh, doing it. Because honestly, when I think magical girl anime, Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon that's about it. That, that's really all I think of. Uh, I mean, there's some twist. I'm not going to pretend Cutie Honey's a great twist on it, but give Cutie Honey credit, it came first. Um, Cutie Honey kind of goes in that territory, but that one, I feel like it's more geared towards your men. You know, I always find it funny and weird that there's magical girl stuff, but there's no magical guy stuff. Probably because it'd be weird as shit. Uh, there's a stuff I think out oh, there, there like, like one or two things I can think of it, it depends really on what you call magical um, but you don't have like cutesy stuff with male characters I don't know what uh, what's that what's that show with all the like the characters are all representatives of nations or something it's like well, really cutesy looking I, I don't know I can't I don't think know of what you're talking about either uh, never mind uh, I've just seen like just little shot uh, pictures here and there of it, and it just looks like something I wouldn't be interested in. Um, but Matoka, I think, is probably the only, and maybe it's not the only, but it's probably the most well known example of taking it into a different uh, angle. Of course, we, we won't spoil it. I'm sure everybody knows about it, but just in case somebody's listening to this, never watched it and is interested in this kind of stuff. I'll let you continue from here. Well, you haven't said it in your fourth slot yet either. Well, I, I will, but is there anything else you want to say about it? Well, there's not really a lot to say about spoiling stuff. All I say is it's one of those shows that just goes like the characters, things don't get happy. There's no happy. Yeah. Movie. Leave it at that. Yeah, we don't even have to spoil anything. The thing is, it goes with a dark kind of a darker twist on the the whole thing. Now, from my perspective, um, a certain character turns out isn't as good as they appear. I call that from the fucking first second I saw the character. The fucking little Digimon looking thing. I mean, it's hinted at a lot, and it's super easy to catch. I didn't really notice that the hint really hinted into like, what was it, the third episode when that when like the third girl becomes one of them yeah you know, like it's in uh, you know it's in sil- silhouette all ominous like with red it's eyes like, it's yeah, like it's come easy to on set up. it's so easy to set up. it's like it, now is it one of those things where that's not really important oh it's important well no i i mean or, i'm not saying the character's not important but is that one of those things where it's like yeah who really cares if this character really is what it is because uh, after that, does it like? It's not like a. It's not like in the Flash when you find, when you find out, and this isn't even a spoiler. They do this in like the second episode. Um, it's like in Flash where uh, Doctor Wells turns out to be the reverse, the reverse Flash who kills Barry's, 
Barry Allen's parents or mother or whatever. It's probably similar to the sort. Um, you kind of can forgive it because you still want to see like the interplay between the characters and stuff like that. I mean, you're you're gonna see it coming. It's hinted at like at the very start, and it you know like you said, you just want to see the you know the chess pieces get put into place. Um, any anything else on it? Again, there's like you can't really talk about it without spoiling without spoiling it. something. It's yeah, like, yeah, one of those things. It's just I like, yeah, I understand. The good thing is, all mine are like almost twenty years old. <laughs> um, number four for me is Outlaw Star. Um, it's funny because I I watched Firefly and fucking loved Firefly, but it's obvious that they took some notes from Outlaw Star, even though Joss Whedon claims he never did. Guys, like, I've never seen it. I never Since saw that this. Very similar. Even though um, <clears throat> um, Girl in a Box. Um, you know, a ragtag crew with it. With you know, I, I'm not going to pick it apart, but whatever. Outlaw Star is fucking awesome. It's the best kind of space, like space uh, adventure. I'm not. People say it's a space western. I call it a space adventure. Uh, it's not your space drama crap or anything. It's not Gundam or anything like that, where where it's like a space opera stuff. No, it's. Basically, if you've seen Firefly and like Firefly, you'll like Outlaw Star. Probably because they ripped it off. Uh, and keep in mind, I love Firefly, but it's just... It, come on. Um, I love the characters. Um, they're all... They all have great personalities. They're all funny. Um, and that's the problem I've had with a lot of, a lot of anime is... Recently... Um, I say recently, like the last ten years. Um... They seem not to. They don't seem to be characters. They're, they don't seem to have their core. Uh. We have tropes now. Well, the thing is, well, we always have tropes, but. Um, but I mean, like, literally walking, talking tropes. They're one trope, <laughs> and then they're stuck at that trope. Okay. Um, I can't even remember really what my point was going to be, but it was. Um, the characters are really funny. Um, they, they are serious when they need to be, um, but there is there's just this lightheartedness to it. And you might not be noticing a theme here with my list, um, at least this far, at least for the first two. Um, if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's really good, fucking awesome uh, theme song. Um, I also really like the designs of the ships and stuff like that, like with the the ships with the arms and stuff like that. I just you never think about that kind of stuff when it comes to sci-fi because you're like, you're more about making it like, you know, sciency and stuff like that. It's not like, I, I don't know, the ship from Gundam Seed or something like that where it's just like over the top futuristic. No, there's a bit of a... There's kind of a grounded... It's not like Firefly where it's all like obtainable stuff. It's still fantastical. It's still sci-fi. But you know what it is? It's less science, more more fiction. It's more fantasy and adventure than it is science fiction. So, um, yeah, it's not like... It's not like a lot of anime that try to strive to be scientifically accurate. No anime strives, strives for that. But you get what I mean, where it's more like... Believable versus fiction. Yeah, uh, and I, I'm just going on boring um the ship designs are 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 unique um just they stand out more that's basically what i'm trying to get at um there is legitimate twists and turns especially if you've never if you've never seen the show then there's some good twists and turns in it uh i didn't see the show until like 2012 i didn't see it when it came on to nami i didn't have the channel um, so it was a long ass time before I got to see it, but I fell in love with the show almost immediately. Um, it's, you know, it's comedic, but it's not too, too comedic. It's, it has dramatic moments, but they're not too dramatic. There's still, um, it has this great sense of adventure. Um, and it kind of has like that kind of 
fuck yeah vibe you get from like Gurren Lagann. I can see similarities between the two. It just one's a lot more spastic and out of control, where the other one's a little bit more subdued, but has it, but has its fantastical moments. I mean, there's a giant, there's a anthropomorphic cat woman trying to catch a giant cockroach, like a giant cockroach. Yeah. Um, Not like the Bebop episode with the little gelatin thing? No, this is more like something out of... Out of this is like something out of a 50s B movie. Fuck. Um, it's just this giant cockroach shows up. Um, anyway, it, it, it does run in kind of an emotional gamut at, at points. Characters will die that you just don't see coming. Uh, and it's not... Like, no, it's not like, oh, I see this coming a mile away. You don't expect it if you've never seen the show. Uh, have you ever seen it? No, I have not. You, if you ever get a chance to see it, it's not on YouTube, so I don't know really how you're going to find it. Ooh. Uh, you might, I don't know, you I might be able to... look somewhere. Yeah, you, you probably find, find it somewhere. It. It's really good. It, it is very good. I, see, this is the problem with, with, with us being, like, critics, because we just love, we just like things. We don't... We don't necessarily just pick it to pieces and stuff like that. It's like, oh, this is why uh, we we like this and stuff like that. Nothing wrong with that. We fuck. We watch reviews, so we, we're kind of into that kind of thing. But this is just us gushing about what we love. Number three. I already know what my top three are. Trigon. Trigon. Yep. Uh, we've said plenty about Trigon. Fucking love the characters. Been back Love and forth, stories. Up and, down and all around of Trigon. Yeah, Trigon is hands down for both of us. It, it's obviously top five. Yeah, Ash is just like a too damn of a good character. Even though some people seem to be annoyed by him. Uh, ah, fuck him. It's a re- well written character. Probably one of the best written characters ever. I mean, he gets serious. In, in anime, I should say. Goofball. What's wrong with those kind of characters? Well, the, but the th- the thing is, he's not just a goofball. It's just the goofballness, the the, the silliness is a mask for for, yeah, for what uh, he's all been through. Yeah, uh, and it's not like again. Okay, here's the thing. Have you ever noticed how people will call Sasuke a whiny bitch, but will never say that about Vash? Because yeah, Vash doesn't. Vash isn't all, you know. Uh, out front about it. I mean, in the first fucking episode of Naruto or whatever, one of the early episodes, Sasuke's like, I'm gonna kill my brother. It's just like, fuck you. It's just, come on. A little subtlety, please. Um, but here's the thing. Vash's antics are legitimately funny and kind of charming. Well, he messes with people, especially in the first episode. And, by the way, some people say he's a pervy character. I've never seen him as much of a pervy character. Only during the mansion one, well, kind the... of, because he tried peeking on the girl. Yeah, and that was kind of out of character, but... That's, like, the only really time... And there's, like, one where he's, like, being more... Being a little pervertive with, with this one girl who's hung up, and he, like, he tries to sneak a peek up her dress. That was, I think... the There's a weird story about that one. That one's more... A lot of people don't take it as canon. Because that's a straight adaptation of of one of the manga issues, um, where in the manga he's a lot more pervy. In the anime, he's more flirtatious. He just, you know, he he, he flirts like he flirts like a young a young boy in love. That's basically what what it is. He's not pervy about well, it. He's, he's only not like only two scenes. The one, with, yeah, when he gets tied up and he's, uh, yeah. it's the one with. Where he's with those outlaws who are trying to get the money for the people who built the town. Who yeah, died. it's a great episode, but it's just that's my that's really not my criticism. That's everybody's criticism of that episode. This Vash is kind of out of character. It's like only one little part, like right there, and then like well, there's the a few few bits oh, throughout. He's a little bit more. He's a little bit. You know how he basically would go out of his way, and ins- insanely. Go, extremely. Um, he goes out of his way so nobody gets hurt, nobody gets kill, killed. Uh, like, even if it's not a kill shot, he will jump in front of a bullet for someone because he doesn't want anybody to be in pain. 
he kind of, I guess he kind of forgets that in this episode. Because he's just what, letting these guys just... Get shot up. Just letting these guys uh, basically kill each other. Um, it's not like in the... the, the uh, Remember the tournament episode? Yeah, the one where he flicks rocks? Yeah, it's not like that. He's not doing that. Uh, he's just letting this kind of play out. And it seems like... It, it didn't feel like an episode of Trigon. It felt like... Because you could actually just edit Vash out of the episode. You literally could just edit him out of the episode. I don't even think the Delivery Girls are in that episode. They might be, but I don't think they are. I think they're in there for like a little bit. I know they were there at the startup or something, because it shows the end and they're in that situation. And then Vash is just listening to music, just you know, walking up, being his good fall self. Yeah, I oh, love yeah. that. By the way, I love that clip of him just dancing outside the saloon. Oh, kill on. But unfortunately, I think Wild Wild West when I see it because of because of a, uh, what is it called, a uh, AMV? Yeah. Um, it's one of the funniest AMVs I've seen. Um, but yeah, Trigun, fucking awesome. Um, that, that's just like probably the only dud, it's not even a dud episode. Well, the dud episode is the one with the uh, Mabel and, what's her name? Are you talking about the one where Vash is barely in it? And so he pops up once and he's like, "Oh, I'm only in this for this long," and then he goes away. Yeah, I actually really liked that episode. Um, it's it's just a, it was a really good episode. The problem is the worst episodes of Trigun Aren't that bad. are still good. That's how good that show is. Um, my number four was The Big O. Um, just watch the first five minutes of the show, and that's all you need to see. Uh, it's beautifully animated. The music, oh god, the music is so good. Uh, the writing, it, it's some of the best writing I, you you will find in anime. As there's only a few shows that would top that. Um, but it so well written. So many good episodes. Of course, I'm just talking about the first run. The, the second run, not so much. The second season, whatever you want to call it. The, the one from 2003. That one... Mm, the first half of the show is so, so good. That's what, unfortunately, that's why it's number three. It's because of that second part. Because it's like, it did, did one half so good. And you're just like, bleh. And I'm, I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not convinced it's the same people. Probably not. I mean, I mean, I'm convinced it's not the same people. That's what I'm worried about with the Samurai Jack return. Yeah, we need to talk about that here, uh, here after this question. Um. Uh, but yeah, Big O is my num is number three. Uh, I've gushed about it enough on this show, so you you know. Um, my number two is tri uh, wait, where am I? Number three. Number two is Trigon, so we'll, we'll just skip that one. We just talked about it. What's your uh, number three? You mean number two? I just number said two. Number, number two. Man, you're like spacing off over yeah, there. Yeah, I am. I have to say Neon Genesis. Really? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna say Neon Genesis. <laughs> I'll be quiet. Um, I don't know, just Sinji as a character is actually pretty relatable, even though he doesn't really change. Because he's the development kind of character. Yeah, just... He's the kind of one who gets worse. But to be fair... I'm gonna be quiet just because I, I do fucking hate that character. To be fair, around his environment, no one really did care about him. And he was used. Everybody was a people. piece of shit in that show. That was the whole thing. There was not really anyone good. No one was good. Well, I, I can respect that, but... It, it's like the only shitty one was Asuka. Asuka was Asuka was a fucking horrible character. Like the only thing, that oh had, my the God. only time she had any redeeming part was in the movie when she said she didn't want to die and she had her little, you know, <laughs> not, not even really then. I'm sorry. I think she's probably one of the the most hateable character in anime, or at least mainstream anime. Just yeah, I don't know, God. I still say Naruto. Number one most hated character. Naruto is more annoying than hateable. Uh, I mean, I got a long list of anime characters I fucking hate. Naruto is more annoying. Um, but anyway, um, I'll just let you continue. Yeah, but the thing with uh, Neon Genesis is uh, the, I didn't really have any issue with the religious part of it because, again, I think religion works fine in fiction. It, yeah, I totally agree. Um, it can be done very well. It's been done very well. I just feel like it... it, it was just kind of a brick over the head 
with some some of its religious symbolism. The it, fucking tree of life just appearing. But I mean, there was not really much of an issue with it because it was just like, well, where else can you really put it? Well, the with thing, it, you know, not being bad. the thing is, I just feel like it. It was just. It felt like it was trying to be complex for the sake of being complex. I thought it was really innovative with it. it yeah, it was being complex for the sake of being complex, more so. But it was still quite interesting and beautiful the way it was done. And Anim- the animation is great. I've always said that it's, it's beautifully animated. Except for during the series, remember those uh, scenes where Cindy just stands there. Episode three. Uh, He's at a station. I'm thinking of like the Ava fights and stuff yeah, like the that. Yeah, Ava fights is where they had to save their budgets. Yeah, that that's where the budget went was the Ava fights, it which was... are great. And I've always liked Ava Unit One. I've always liked the design of Ava Unit One, even though I don't like the show. I really like Ava Unit One. I just I love the design, the the way it moves. It, it doesn't move like a robot, and it, probably because it's a uh, fucking what is, it's an angel in armor. But still, I'm I'm just saying that great design, probably one of, one of the most iconic giant robots, uh, at least out of modern anime. If it counts as a giant robot, more fuck robot, it, I count it. Monster thing. Oh, and one thing is, it uses fucking like a knife and a pistol and shit. It just like like just giant versions just, of regular military weaponry. Just, like, just let it have its hands, and it does the work fine. Fucking rip, rip it. Agent of in like two. Yeah, it's just like fuck. The berserk mode is all you really need. Um, and doesn't every giant robot have a berserk mode? Seems like it. Does every robot have a berserk mode? Yes. Um. Okay. And in, in like a lot of poorly written anime. Yes. That are like, basically trying to rip off other anime that done it. Gundam's done it a few times. Uh, punk G Gundam. Like they do it like. Um, there's like five characters with that. My robot has a feelings of anger. Yeah, fucking G Gundam though. I got. If you've never seen that show, I need to show you so it. What needs to do is hit all of the robots that have anger mode. A little button. Rage. Uh, yeah. Do sex market of rage. <laughs> um. Anyway. Uh. So it, you would put that as number two. Okay. Uh. I can't say I agree, but whatever is your opinion. Um. Uh, number one. You go first. I've gone first. You know, uh, you know what it is. Yeah, it's Bebop. It's Cowboy Bebop. How could it not be? So easy to read. Almost like everyone. But I'm just... It's, here's the thing. There's a reason why everybody loves it. It's fucking good. It's like... It's amazing. So, um... Yeah, I... Everybody knows Cowboy Bebop. Everybody's seen Cowboy Bebop. Everyone knows why it's awesome. Everybody knows why it's one of the greatest anime series of all time. So, that's, I don't have to say anything else. So, you go ahead. You have the floor. It's a clash. I don't know. After thinking about Full Metal, a theater between Full Metal Alchemist, both versions, I love. They're I prefer both, the original, but uh, Brotherhood's both, good too. They're both equal in their own standing. Or Ping Pong the Animation. Ping Pong the Animation. I still have not seen that. I've been trying to find it. It's, it's too hard to find. on YouTube. All of it, I think. Dubbed? Not dubbed, it's only sub. Is there a dub? No, there isn't. Okay, then I'm going to have to just suck it up and watch the sub. I think you're going to have to get used to that, because I don't know if we're going to be getting a lot of dubs as the new enemies. Ah. So, a lot of the dub fans, I'm sorry, but... A lot of the sub purists are probably happy. I mean, I usually just prefer either or. It's just yeah. like, what sounds better? I, like I've said, we've done, we've talked about this before, and I prefer dub, just because... I don't I, I want I don't want my attention solely on the bottom of the like, screen. Like I can agree with like you know dub, because like okay you got Bebop you got Black Lagoon and you got Full Metal Alchemist. Stomp's the living shit out of the subbed version. God, yeah. Al sounds like a fucking girl. Yeah, I've you, I've noticed that with a lot of subs for for anime. Goku is I've never liked the sound of Goku's voice in. I get it. It's the same voice actor from from Young Goku. I get it. It's been the same voice actor. But it just sounds like a dying rat. <laughs> and uh, Bacchano. Those are like the... Oh, and Fooly Cooly also sound better in dub. Um, and Gurren Logon. I can't imagine Big O not being dubbed. All the ones I've, I've listed, 
Except for maybe Dragon Ball. Do I? I don't. I have never heard uh, Big O sub. I've never have either. So pretty. Uh, there has to be one. It's an anime. Yeah, I think there is. Um, I can't imagine it not being the Trigun. I can't imagine it being in Japanese. Just, I mean, Johnny Bosch just yeah. is Vash. Yeah. So it's just like hearing it in the sub. It's just like. It's missing something. Okay. Um, so your number one is... Probably going to be ping pong. Or say... metal. All right. It so it's a tie for you. Yeah. That's fine. Um, nothing much else to say. Let's get on to the, uh, the next question because that took forever. Um, mostly my fault. Hang on. I got to kind of... I think for it. the top five stuff, we need to like shorten it. Yeah. And, and plus, that's an answer. We, I think we've at, answered that question like three times. Yeah. Um, okay. You get to take a break. Um, TNA Killer asks, uh, worst commentary team you've ever heard in pro wrestling history? I don't, I don't fucking know. The current team on Raw. Moving on. Jerry Lawler, Michael Cole, and JBL. Fuck that 3 0. They, they suck. It's probably some of the worst commentary I've ever heard. At least the guy from freaking King of the Ring 94, at least he was entertaining. I mean, he, he should have not been on commentary. I can't think of his name. His name was like, he was some like old baseball player. The guy sounded like he was like, he sounded like an old war veteran that took too much shrap metal to the brain. But even he was more entertaining than <laughs> whatever that fucking laugh Michael Cole tries to do. That forced fake laugh. It's not their fault. It's Vince McMahon screaming in their ears to say certain things certain ways and, um, you know, laugh, damn it, laugh. It's just he, he's the mastermind, so it's all him. But, I mean, the guy from the 94 King of the Ring, I mean, he was fun. I mean, it was, it was so bad it was funny. That's basically how it was. It was so bad it was good. You should have someone from the room do commentary. <laughs> uh, Tommy was so... I'm fed up with this world. This bullshit. Um, anyway. Let, let's see. Uh, you want to turn that light on? Which one is it? We're just sitting in the dark. It's the long one. This one? Yeah, right there. We're just sitting in the dark. Um, I don't know. They're, they're, this guy was just going on like, Oop, How much does this guy weigh? Well, that's not fair. He's bigger than that guy. He's like, oh, he's the evil. He's like a businessman. He just—it it, it was so cringeworthy. You, you almost—it was entertaining. Um, one of my favorite moments, though, is I love how not a good sign when when Gorilla Monsoon messes up his name in the first five seconds. And like he 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 tries like three times to say his name right, and he never got it right. Um, at the near to the end of the show. That you have, I think it's Macho, Macho Man Randy Savage and Gorilla Monsoon on commentary with, with, with the baseball player. I can't think of his name. Um, and they slowly crop him out of the shot. So now it's just uh, Gorilla and Macho Man. And the, Gorilla Monsoon kept up on him. He stopped, stopped answering his questions. He just stopped talking to him. Macho Man at least was still trying. Yeah, it was it was a train wreck, but one of the most entertaining train wrecks. But seriously, my my worst commentary I've ever heard is the current current one on Raw. I don't let I don't watch SmackDown, so I don't know NXT. They're they're okay, but God, the days of Jerry Lawler and Jim Ross are long gone. Okay, next question. Um, a coot Jack. Well, he well he just. One bonus points right there. Aku Jack. You can actually read the name. Shush. <laughs> uh, did you guys ever watch Power Rangers? I know you did. I didn't. I see you did some well. Yeah, that's basically it. About it a lot. I... I'll, I will pretend it's legitimately good, but the original show was really entertaining. Um, it's just silly, goofy, over-the-top fun. It's basically what it is. Um... I wonder how much, I wonder how much money my mom bought, uh, how much money my mom spent on buying Megazords and stuff when I was like six. 
it had to be well old. They're pretty expensive. It had it. I'm pretty sure she spent almost a million dollars on on Power Ranger toys when I was a kid. Um, yeah, I was a Power Rangers fanatic. You never really watched it. Um, so yeah, that was a quick one. Um. Okay, hang on. Half the thing's being chopped off. Uh. Uh, Funimation, uh, Fanimation Chick, 1990. Um, favorite animated film, Keep Up the Great Work. All right. There, there's a little... Little smiley face. <laughs> uh, yeah. A little favoritism there. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's rub it in. All right, um... Favorite animated film that oh, fuck that's hard. Um, it, it depends. I don't know. You asked me a month, like, month from now, I'll probably it'd probably be a different answer. I'm let you go first. I need. Okay, it's either between uh, Mary and Max, Wolf Children, Fantastic Mr. Fox. That's a fucking good one. Um, uh, the one um. Maybe, maybe Secret and Them. It's probably going to be a Don Bluth movie, um, which uh, apparently they're working on trying to make a Dragon Slayer game. I mean, movie. Oh, yeah, Dragon I think Slayer's Secret movie and them might actually get a live action or a CG remake. Oh fuck! Yeah, I think I told you just, that. Long, just leave it. I told you that a long time ago. Oh my! I remember reading up somewhere. Yeah, I remember. Oh my god. So, uh, yeah, you might get, like, a nasty CG version of... Uh, oh, oh them, God. Man. They're gonna look like fucking chipmunks. Did you see Did you see that reboot of chipmunks on that mm-hmm. new TV show? It looks fucking horrible. They look... Oh, my God, they look terrible. It's just, dear God. Well, it matches shitty movies that I have not seen, but I can tell shit. Oh, I'm forgetting something. Oh, God. I did enjoy the Trigon movie. Just because it was just, you know, more Trigon. It's Funkin' Trigon, yeah. Uh, let's try to stick to to Western. Uh, since we, we we went on forever about anime. And yeah, Mary and Max, uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox, and fucking love, Children. Fucking love Up. That and was up, really yeah, good. Up, that up. was a really good one. Well, I enjoyed the first segment of it. The other segment was... Okay, I like I enjoyed both. Most people, when it comes up, most people are like that. They prefer the the beginning. Wow, it's kind of like Wally. Everyone likes the beginning, uh, but well, uh, Wally kind of messed up its middle. Uh, halfway through, it just it didn't mess it up. I I like Wally all the way through. I, I like Up all the way through, but um, it's just there's there's people who only seem to like the first half of the movies. And I also need to watch uh, How to Train Your Dragon. That one's really good. That's Have you seen it? one of the, probably one of the best DreamWorks movies. Um, that's yeah, fuck it, I'll say it. How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah, uh, no, not not as my favorite. I'm just oh. saying, uh, DreamWorks. It's probably one of the best okay. DreamWorks movies. Uh, I don't know. I guess I guess Prince of Egypt would be um, higher on DreamWorks movies. But um, animated movie, I'm probably going to say Secret and Them. Um, it's just it's it's fucking Don Bluth. It's one of Don Bluth's best movies. I bet for most people it would probably be like a Disney movie or something. Well, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying Don Bluth was more Disney than Disney was at the time. I mean, <laughs> you you watch uh, Land Before Time, you swore it was a Disney movie. I actually thought it was a Disney movie when I first saw it. The funny thing is it came out the same week and Oliver and Company came out. And you would think Oliver and Company was like the Universal movie where... Land Before Time, you would think, was the uh, Disney movie. Um, just, I don't know. All right, going to go with Secret and Them. Um, Disney movies are great, but I, I, I absolutely love um, Secret and Them. So what was your pick? I'll go for number one, Mary and Max. Mary and Max, okay. Um, explain that one. Oh, God damn it. Why do they have to be so close when they enrage? Because they want to run outside. They just go and 
There's no other place. To, there's a cat. They're chasing a cat. Okay. Anywho, Mary and Max is pretty much about a pretty much a deadbeat man who happens to get a message from a Australian uh, girl. Mm-hmm. Damn, I'm really terrible at explaining things, but also the fact that <laughs> I don't, we'll don't want to like spoil anything for it because it's just it's just, it's hard to sell it without spoiling it. Again, so basically, just also. just see it. This is one of those things where you just have to say it to see it. Yeah, it's an emotional roller coaster. It's claymation, and, and it's really well done claymation. But I love claymation. I might have to see it then. But it's damn. It's just really hard to really explain it without spoiling it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's kind of like Star Wars. It's hard to go into without spoiling. Because you don't want to say anything about it because it's just got these really nice highlight moments. But you want them to be highlight moments for other people without ruining it. Yeah. So if anybody's interested in claymation and stuff like that, uh, just check it out. Yeah, it's, uh, done, it's, it's done in the style of Wallace and Crumpet. No, what's it called again? Mary and Max. It is Mary on Max. Netflix. All right. Um, shit, I can check that out when we're done. Okay, next question. Um, I hate that this thing starts over. Uh. Ben, well, oh, fuck. Well, I'll come back to that one. Um, okay. Badass anime fangirl ask, who is your favorite cartoon badass? I guess she says no, cartoon, so. Cartoon. That's hard. Um, I don't know. I guess because anime characters are more obviously badass. Well, we're gonna have cartoon. I haven't watched Avatar, so I can't say. Yeah, um, I, I heard like the villain's pretty badass in that. Voiced by uh, Mark Hamill. Yeah. Uh, called Camel again. Hamill. <laughs> Mark Hamill. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. Uh, badass oh, cartoon. God, the Lich. Uh, wait, the Lich? Oh, from Adventure Time. Yes. No, is that scary or badass? From badass. Badass. Okay. Oh my god. Ah, god, I gotta maybe say J- Casey Jones. From uh, from Ninja Turtles. Although, what's his name from Megas XLR was really awesome. Coop. Coop, Coop wasn't a badass. <laughs> he was a, love Coop, but he was not a badass. The robot was badass. I'll say that the robot was. The robot was badass, but Coop wasn't. Uh, nah, Coop, Coop was badass. He had to be badass to pilot something like that. But anyway, um, like actual like ass kicking, kick ass characters. Um. Technically, courage. He got, he got shit done. Yeah, he got shit done, but nah. Or Samurai Jack. <laughs> Samurai Jack, that would be one. Samurai Jack. Uh, um, I would have to really go back and look. Um, I'm kind of blanking on a lot of things. Um, or the Ice King. The Ice King. I want to... Are you... Not, not when he's like the Ice King himself, but when he no. was... Uh, I get what you mean. I, I haven't gotten that far in, into it, but I, I know what you're talking about. Okay. Um, that's hard hard for me to say. Or Garnet. Garnet's pretty fucking awesome. I get all the gems from Steven Universe. Yeah, gem, the gems are awesome. Um, it's really hard. Cartoon badass. Um, I, I, I'm thinking like Casey Jones. I'm thinking like... Uh, how, fucking... how do we go from good character and an evil character? Okay, badass villain and badass hero. Okay, that's also hard because villain you have Aku. Aku was fucking awesome, but I don't. I, I never looked at him. He wasn't a badass though. Yeah, he didn't get shit done. <laughs> he, he, he was, was great. Crazy. He he was funny. He was great. He was menacing, but he wasn't a badass. Um, I'm sure there's some the you know what samurai we're sick with samurai Jack hero, fucking Scotsman. Fucking Scotsman was awesome. Every time he appeared, yeah. I just, I mean, come on, he had a machine gun for a peg leg. Badass. <laughs> and he did it. Be- he did it before in Grindhouse. Yep. Oh well, that was shotgun, but still. Um. Oh my god, he was an awesome character. Uh, I I posted like a, a picture a long time ago on Facebook that just uh, says, "I got your brave heart right here, Mel." He's like pointing to his magic sword. Um, I love that character. Okay, badass villain. Um, 
I think Mumra was a kick-ass villain when he when we transformed because he would just wreck shit. Um, but I don't think anybody listening watched Thundercats. I watched a little Thundercats whenever uh, reruns were on. Um, badass villain. Probably not going to be from the 80s. Uh, because all of them was like the Shredder and, and Cobra Commander. Mm. Kick-ass villains from cartoons. Um, what does Beast Wars count as? I don't know. I mean, I think it was... I don't know what the fuck that is. Uh, I, I'm just going to throw in Dinobot. I mean, come on, Scott McNeil. And when is Scott McNeil not bad at? Fucking Wolverine! Fucking Wolverine from X-Men, why not? I mean, granted, it was a comic book character first, but... I mean, yeah, I'm trying to avoid the comic book and superhero Ah, stuff. okay, you're trying to avoid that. All right. Damn, because that's a lot of what I watched when I was a kid. Uh, so no Batman. Yeah. Damn it. I mean, come on, I would have been a little too easy. If you had, like, comic book and superhero stuff. you had comic book characters, yeah, it wouldn't be too easy. Um... Ah, uh, I would have to really go far back on this, um... And, you know, it has to be cartoons, so... I don't know. I really like that. The Scotsman, so... I'm gonna go with him. What's your own? Who'd you go with as your villain? I don't know. I didn't pick one. Um, Because I couldn't think of one off the top of my head. Uh, I don't want to say Mumra, because I have... Do what? Mandor. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? Um... I'm just trying to think of kick-ass villain. You know what? Uh, maybe he wasn't badass and stuff, but he had a badass design. Um, Robotnik from um, oh, Sonic okay. the Hedgehog at AM. Not, not, not the, you know, not. Oh, Mojo Jojo has a better version. Uh, I, I like Robotnik from from Sonic the Hedgehog. Not the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, but Sonic the Hedgehog, yeah. the more you know, the darker one. Uh, just a badass design and an awesome voice. I mean, it's Jim Cummings. I mean, I mean, God, he sounded like he just gargled evil. <laughs> um, he, apparently he, he grabbed off cue and blended them and drank them. Gargled them. Alrighty. Uh, okay. Outlaw Bebop 91. Biggest pussy in anime. <laughs> One who didn't get shit done. That's how I want to see it. Okay, fine. So I can't say Shinji. Biggest pussy in anime. In Yasha. They didn't get shit done. They literally didn't okay, get shit they, done. They actually... They did, but... Fuck, I'm, okay. yeah, I'm with you in Yasha. He got away. Every time. Fucking sucked as a hero. <laughs> oh no, I can kill a villain, but... It's I'm all too- about the chase. Ugh, I, I'm with you and you, Nasha. Um, I, I don't know. I didn't watch any... I barely watched Naruto, so I can't really pick any character from that. You can't... You you already took took away my pick, so I had to come up with another pick. Um, I don't know. Um, I still say... You know, I still say the proto NG was... Uh, uh, what is his name? Kanana from from Akira. Uh, he was a he was a little bit bitchy, but you can kind of understand his situation. But you know, he was more bitchy than than, than a pussy. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna say Nasha. Easy picking. Didn't you see, 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 we don't have to be smart about it because because of the question. Because pussy, so we we uh, don't have to be intelligent about this. Okay. NWP or NJPW fan ninety eight as God, we a lot of people from like ninety eight, ninety nine. Any good wrestling anime? Nope. But like, like legitimately good? Nope. Unless I, I don't know, maybe Ultimate? No, no, not Ultimate Muscle. That was stupid. Uh, I don't know. 
I, I don't know. That's my answer. That means there is room for someone to make a good wrestling anime. I just don't see anime wrestling and anime An over working. Over top anime. An over someone... top. You know what? You want to know what anime I would like to see? Punch Out. I would love to see a Punch Out anime. That would be perfect. Um, okay, because literally the only wrestling animes I've seen is Ultimate Muscle, Sidekick, which was shit. Yeah, Sidekick was shit. And not Sidekick, like superhero Sidekick. I mean, like, little physical Sidekick. Um, I I never saw the, the anime that Tiger Mask came from, so... I don't know, maybe that? I've never seen it, so I don't know. Like I said, there is room. There is room for, for wrestling at MA. Okay, Jack and Ratchet. Um, wouldn't that have been an awesome crossover? What? Ratchet and Clank meet Jack and Daxter. That would have been awesome. Yeah, Especially if it was like Jack 2, Jack. Okay. What's your Mount Rushmore of video games? He didn't say characters. He said video games. Yeah, so. games. And this is for things that have caused inspiration. Uh, just, just like the most important games or something like that. Yeah, caused inspiration. Well, I mean, we know like right off the bat, Mario. Yeah, like how much that Mario has, has to be on there. So much. Um, I'm gonna say first, Pac-Man. Well, Pac-Man was there for gaming, but did he inspire? Yeah, it, it, it it's the game that based that made gaming popular in arcades and at least in America because yeah, it we'd save arcades perhaps but, well the thing well fighting games also saved like, yeah yeah like Mortal Kombat but those came came like like 10, 10 15 years later oh well, those would be for probably for fighters was like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat because they saved the arcade era also yeah I'm just I'm, I don't know this is hard we can do one for like individual genres but yeah. I think overall I'm you know, we're, we're going to give, like, our individual ones. I say, uh, first one I would pick would be Pac-Man. Um, my second pick would be Mario. I'm assuming that's your first pick. Yeah, because it's inspired a lot. You've seen its influence on almost See, any platformer. And the thing is, we can't just pick all classics. We have to go, like, throughout the course of gaming. Um, you know, I know Pac-Man wasn't there in the beginning, but that was the game that... That was the first iconic video game character. Was it that Mario was? No, I would say Pac-Man. Pac-Man I was insanely popular. I it had a fucking song that that hit number I think it was a top top charting song. I don't know if it hit number 1, but come on, Pac-Man Fever. It was everywhere. Um it, it was everywhere. It, it just it was it's hard for me to say cuz I wasn't around then, but Plenty of people. I've had plenty of people talk about how insanely popular Pac-Man was back back in the eighty one, eighty two. Okay, because that Mario. No, was it, this would have been like, like 80, 79, 80, probably. Okay, because that was Mario that was like insanely popular. That's the one I usually if, always hear about. That's Mario. oh yeah, it, it, he was also really big and probably even bigger. Uh, yeah, I would say Mario is bigger than Pac-Man because most people forgot about Pac-Man. Well, uh, nobody forgets about Pac-Man, but you know. Um, so for me, it's Pac Man, Mario. For you, be Mario. And I'm looking at like the genres I usually like. And for RPG, I don't know what caused influences, uh, Earthbound. That is the most heavily influenced one I hear compared to like Final but, Fantasy. It's like between those two. I'm with you, but I, I'll go with Final Fantasy because I think it came out first. Um, it? Yeah, I think I it did. Because I know both of those had a heavy-handed influence on RPGs. I mean, there's so many games that was inspired by Earthbound. So, you know, instantly Final Fantasy. Um, so you go with Mario, Earthbound. Yeah, I'm going platformers, RPG, um, FPS would be Doom. Yeah. Because Doom right off the bat set the genre up. Not the first first person shooter, but definitely the one that popularized it. Yeah. Um Right now your your Mount Rushmore is Mario, Mario Earthbound, Earthbound and Doom. Doom. 
and I don't know if this has to be just four, because, but, um, I was just throwing some extra ones and we can think of it. Um, oh, shit, how can I forget about Metroid? Metroidvania games are huge. Oh, yeah, what? Well, it's Castlevania, Metroidvania. Yeah, yeah, I know what it is. Um, and it established so much for, for sci-fi games and stuff like that. Um, that one's really hard. Um... Let's kind of move on to like more more modern era. Well, it anything from the nineties on is modern, but um, more the last fifteen years. Um, I say Metal Gear Solid, but how much did that actually inspire? For the play, it has a pretty big cult following, doesn't it? Yeah, not even cult. It's a trip. It, it, it was a triple A title coming out. Like, and let's talk about Metal Gear Solid, not not Metal Gear. Uh, because Metal Gear w- was a relatively unknown game on the NES, but um, or Famicom, whatever. Well, didn't it set up stuff for some? I don't know what games have any games really been inspired by Metal uh, Gear. Uh, Tom the, Tom Clancy's uh, Splinter Cell. Splinter Cell is very very inspired. Is clearly inspired by Metal Gear Solid. Um, I want to say Hitman, but I'm not sure if Hitman came. Because I never played the original Hitman on PC, so I don't know how old it is. So it might have might have came out around the same time. Um, but my Mount Rush, I think my Mount Rushmore. I'll just get this right out of the way. My Mount Rushmore of games is probably going to be Pac-Man, Mario, Final Fantasy, and um, hmm, and Metal Gear Solid. I think that's my four. Um. Now that might be because I'm, no, this is probably biased because I'm a huge Metal Gear Solid fan, but it did change gaming. It, 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 it I mean, you had to be blind not to notice it, not just from gameplay mechanics, but from writing, from from cutscenes, from from storytelling, voice acting, voice acting, for example, <laughs> better than Resident Evil. Um, from voice acting, everything. It it showed that video games could be productions. They could be um, taken with the same amount of seriousness as a film. Um, and it obviously has had influence because look at the landscape of gaming. Um, so that's mine. Yeah, mine would be Mario, Earthbound, Doom, and then either between... Which one, what is it really? Is it Castlevania or is it Metrovania that it's called? I think it's just called It's Metroid. called Metro... Uh, Metrovania. Yeah, because it's just a combination. So you would say Metroid. Yeah. Um. Okay. So technically, it would be like. Yeah. Okay. So that's our Mount Rushmores. Uh, if you guys, um, you know, you guys throw yours down at the bottom if you want. Okay. These are from Wrestling Amino. These are some questions I took from them. Um. One of these is wrestling related, so I'll save that one. First one. What's your favorite animated show and why? Um, well, we already said what our favorite animes are. Um, so let's try to stick to cartoons. Like just animated shows. I'm going to go with Batman the Animated Series. That was a good one. But I'm going to go with... I don't know. Adventure Time I've been mixed on. I've liked it. I've had issues with it. But I've come, I keep coming back for it. I, I, I like I'm newer sure. cartoons of... Uh, Steven Universe is probably my favorite out of no, newer cartoons. Yeah, I, I mean, I highly enjoy Steven Universe, but I also, you know, highly enjoy Adventure Time, too. So, you, you would go more towards, like, more modern stuff. Yeah. Which, that's fine. Um, so, Adventure Time or Steven Universe? But there's also Courage, also. And then there's Samurai Jack. And you love that. I know how much you fucking love that show, so. Hard for you, ain't it? Personally, I don't know, I just I like spend a dime, like whatever one it lands on. Yeah, so so you four way tie tie between those four. Um, okay, who's your favorite? T- oh, he just says TMNT. Who's your favorite Ninja Turtle and why? I don't watch it. I thought you did. No. The two thousands one. No. You, I thought you liked Ninja Turtles. No. We did an entire podcast on Ninja Turtles. 
I didn't watch it. You didn't watch Ninja Turtles at all? No. You didn't watch the movies? No. You said you watched the movies. When? I said Maybe that was Rob. I watched the old one. Yeah. That's Some what I'm talking one. about. Yeah, the one with the weird suits and he looked really... The Jim, Hen- the Jim Henson costumes. Yeah. Um, okay, well, mine's probably... Mine's probably in either Michelangelo or Donatello. And I thought I thought you were more into Ninja Turtles than I thought. Um, I'm, I'm, it might have been Robert who was more into it. Um, okay. Here's just a question I really wanted to answer. And I didn't want to save this for, for something else. I just wanted to get this one out of the way. Um, who should face Undertaker at WrestleMania and who... Would benefit from from the mo- who would benefit from the most from facing him, and should Taker win or lose at uh, his first little match? Uh, it's hor- horribly written. Uh, he thought not helping with the fact you can't read well. Hey, shut up. Neither can you. Um. Don's just re- reading a thing right now. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. Studying up at the moment. It's okay. Um, who should face the Undertaker? I I don't know. It's probably going to be John Cena. Uh, should he win or lose? It's Texas. It's probably going to be the main event. So I say he should win. Who who could benefit from from it the most? I really don't know. Yeah. Maybe Roman Reigns, maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe Kevin Owens, but I'm not really interested in that kind of match. It's probably going to be John Cena, and I say yes, Undertaker should win. That's, yeah, that was the wrestling question out of those, so, yeah, he's easily done. Alright, another thing, one thing we wanted to talk about was uh, the reboot of Samurai Jack. What do you think? It's either A, going to be really good, B, be really shitty, or C, be okay. Um, it's probably going to be C. <laughs> I know I might have an issue with like what I did with the Fog of Courage, because Eustace's voice wasn't the original voice. Oh, the guy died. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing you can do about that. But, I mean, it's just, you can really, really, really tell, as much as the you know new guy tries. Yeah. It's... Uh, well, the thing with it is, it got the atmosphere done. It got the atmosphere right. It got the feeling of courage right. So, I would call that one like success. Uh, what did you think of the Flash animated Powerpuff Girls thing? I didn't even watch it. You didn't even watch it. No. I, I thought it was really good. Um, I, I know people fucking hated it because it was different. But really, that was the, as far as the criticism went. It was different, so they didn't like it. It worked worked well for me. Speaking of reboots, I just might as well ask this. I might as well answer this because people have been asking me about it. The new Alvin the Chipmunks TV show on Nickelodeon. I'm not fucking watching it. From what I've seen, it's the just... What the fuck is Nickelodeon doing? I don't Seriously. know. They've been adapting shitty shows and they're just like, let's throw our money away because we don't know what we're doing anymore. this will be popular in a year. Ugh. Like it's even popular when, when these come out road chip uh my, my friend cody saw the road chip and he s- said it was fucking painful oh and apparently they, apparently they think austin is the wild west what yeah just just watch uh double toasted or whatever it's called they they rip it apart for that exact same thing basically apparently um austin they they find like Apparently, the one saloon that still exists in Texas, the one Old West saloon, of course, everybody's wearing cowboy hats. Fuck. Fucking hell. Uh, by the way, if you ever wanted to know anything about that movie, just watch Black Nerd Comedy. He did a review of it. Um, what do I think of the new reboot? It's just the same fucking show. Like everyone says, oh, it's ruining my childhood. It's you know, it's not like the '80s one, even though the '80s one's not the original. It's a reboot too. I love how everybody pretends that was the original. It's the exact same goddamn thing. 
except they're singing like Nicki Minaj songs and Justin Bieber songs and stuff like that. I I don't know what whatever the fuck's popular now. The I mean, what did they sing in the eighties? Um, beat it. Um, girls just want to have fun and stuff like you 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 know the generic pop songs of the time. It, it's no different. Hey, I grew up on Evan and Jake Monks. I love the, the I love the eighties show. I love you know the the movie from from like nineteen ninety. That's that's really good. But the thing is about the you know it's really really well animated and stuff like that. And it's probably one of the better uh, things done for Evan and Jake Monks. But let's not forget the fact that the 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 actual cartoon, the one from the sixties and from the and from the eighties were terrible. It's another fact that people losing their shit because something's different from what they remember it. Even if they don't remember it very well. So, do you think the same thing's going to happen to Samurai Jack, even if it's good? Do you think people are just oh, yeah. just not going to oh, accept it? Yeah, definitely. It's going to be animated differently and people are still going to have issues with it. The voice actor's not going to be the same for Aku and they're still going to have an issue with it. It's just like with the Fog of Courage. It was done in CG, and people were like, I fucking hate this. I only ever watched this. It's unredeemable. You fucked up. Yeah, it's just, and of course, that kills any chance of them bringing back Courage because of people's reaction. Yep. Um, but fuck, it's on Netflix, so again, yeah, just watch it. Um, the Samurai Jack one. Um, I don't know if there's, if it's... I don't know what the animation style is going to be. Um, would you be okay with Flash animation? I'm okay with any animation so long as it's just able to finish the story and do it right. Okay. As long as it's done, fuck it up. As long... Okay. So, no to a reboot. Yeah. You, you don't want it to be a reboot. You want it to be a, an actual continuation. Uh, I think that's what every fan wants, pretty much. And why would you reboot it? It's already perfect as is. Yeah. Just start showing it on TV again. Yeah. And don't hide it away on Toonami. Actually put it on prime time. Um, okay, technically, prime time. You get my point, though. Put it on, like, at 7 o'clock. Oh, wait, no fucking Adult Swim comes on at 7 o'clock now. Or 8 o'clock. Whatever. It seems to come on earlier and earlier and earlier. Because I'll watch... I'll flip by Cartoon Network, like, at 8, and King of the Hill's on. Yeah, because when you think Cartoon Network, you think of King of the Hill. Nothing wrong with King of the Hill. It's a great show, but <laughs> I'm just saying... You see it, you don't think Cartoon Network. You think Fox. Because it was on Fox since like 1997. Yeah. Oh, dear God, that last season. That last season was horrible. Yeah. Oh, God. Like, probably becoming a hipster or something. The whole America versus Canada episode was stupid. I don't know. Adult party cartoons, once they go on for a certain amount of time, they just become full blown retard. Yeah. South Park needs to stop. Okay, considering my co-host is uh, reading a pamphlet, I think we're going to call it a break. Uh, or, you know, I think we're going to call it a show. Sorry, there wasn't a whole lot Wait, to do. is there any of them we can just bullet through? Hmm? Is there any of them that we can just, like, jump through really quick? What? Questions? We, we went for all of them. Oh, that was all of them? That was all of them. I told no. you there wasn't a whole lot. Wait, what about the other two you got? What about the others? We just did them. Those were... There was like two. Well, there was like three. One was wrestling. Wait, are you sure? Yes. Oh, well, that was the three new ones. Okay. You're probably reading something wacky. No. Well, I know you're probably not reading it right. Uh, no. Uh, the Undertaker question, the favorite animated shows, and favorite Ninja Turtle. Those were the questions. Those okay. were the new ones. Okay. Uh, see if we have any other ones we've missed. I don't think we have. Um, no, I don't think we've missed any. Um, oh, this is something I wanted to talk about. Um, okay, we're we're gonna kind of push the show on a little longer. How? What? What's the time? One twenty. One twenty. Okay, so uh, we have enough time to get through this. Do you hear about the thing about uh, Kojima in the video game awards? No, I did not hear about that. Okay, they had an 
there was an award that was going to go out to Kojima for Metal Gear Solid 5. I can't remember what the, what award it was. But apparently, Hideo Kojima was threatened with legal action and was told not to go to the award show by Konami. Konami was threatening Hideo Kojima with legal actions so he wouldn't go to the award show. Does he... That is some petty shit, isn't it? I don't get how they could be like... This whole pissing game... Well, this not even a pissing game between them because it's a company being shitty against one of their... Probably one of their best employees. Well, or not employee, but he, he one of his best promoters. Uh, developers, I mean. Um... What do you mean? He just recently... He's recently just... Um, his claws in his contract are up, so now he can go off and do new things. But they, they were treating him like shit for months after he quit. They were just ch- treating him like dirt. I don't see how they could legally prevent him from going to a place. Maybe prevent him from getting the award because they would just argue that... Oh, no, we They banned want- him from the building. They threatened him... And told him he was not allowed to be there. And fucking, uh, what's his name? I, the host, I can't think of his name right now. Um, I mean, everyone makes fun of him for, for being the guy who shows out, you know, Doritos and Mountain Dew. He, you know, he, people make fun of him for being a corporate sellout. But the guy, call, he basically called out Konami. But he didn't really call him. He, he... You know, you think, okay, I don't want to piss off Konami because, you know, you know, uh, it's Konami. No, he just said, hey, Konami banned, banned Hideo Kojima from, from this award show. He just threw it out there. Uh, at, you know, thousands of people were watching this. So and he just throws it out there. The award for Metal Gear was it Konami, I'm guessing? N- no, they... No one came out to accept it, so the host accepted it. But he, he said the award still goes to Hideo Kojima. Um, but just... God, so petty of this company. And it, it, it's just like... We're witnessing like the... We're wis- witnessing the self-destruction of a company. Because how can they treat people like Hideo Kojima like shit? Like, you know, treat him like this. They got enough money that they don't care. Just... Konami's a shitty company. And I feel bad. I actually feel bad paying money for Metal Gear Solid 5. I'm not even kidding. I legitimately feel bad for that. But because it's could probably Hideo Kojima's last AAA game, unless. unless wait, I think he. No, wait. He signed a deal with Sony Entertainment. So he's working for Sony now? He's working for Sony now. Um, he, I think he reunited with, with, with Del Toro. Um, you know, he was supposed to be there for the for PT for uh, Silent Hills. Maybe they could probably take PT and turn into something else. They have that great playable trailer. Um, why does it have to be Silent Hill? Just name it something else. Yeah, there just call go. it something else and just... You know, I mean, the enemies have always changed, haven't they? Just names and stuff like that. Just change it around. You know, don't have it be like about a, you know... Uh, the fuck is Simon Hill about? Uh, just a scary town. A possessed town or something. Well, It's been so long since I'm playing them. Apparently it's for Silent Hill 2, for that little girl, it wasn't a scary town. It was still the resort from what she saw. Yeah. Um, it's just more so the town is based on what the person sees. A fuck, it basically, it's a creepy town. Yeah. Creepy town that preys off, preys off your insecurities. Um, just pre- preys off your mind. Um, just don't make it about that. Just try to keep, try to you know, avoid, you know, obviously be, avoid uh, copyright infringement. That's a lot to dodge. Um, but yeah, I would love to see them redo it. But you know what? Konami basically was cracking the rip telling them, Hey, we want you to make a, another Metal Gear. They won't... He, he wasn't, like, free to, you know, make the kind of games he was wanting to make. You know, it was like, it's Metal Gear or nothing. 
And now he's free to basically do whatever the fuck he wants. He can make any kind of game game he wants. It's fucking Hideo Kojima, so... Unless you're brain dead, why would you ever say no to Hideo Kojima? One of the big... One of the biggest names in video in in the video game industry. Um, it's funny to think how he how Konami treated him, considering how how influential he was or is, I should say. Um, it's just it's insane that Konami would be this petty. Well, we know he's gonna go downhill and probably couple, fall off the face of the earth. Couple years. It's okay. Pachinko machines will save us. Oh my god, fucking Konami. Uh, anything else? Because I think yeah, I think we're about, about tapped it. out. Uh, what's the time? One fifty, just about. One fifty. Okay, so um, yeah, we're gonna call it a night. This it was nice to do this again after three, two, three months. Um, hopefully. We won't be having the same problems we had in the past. I can ensure that. I can ensure the videos would be upload. Um, would be upload. Um, you know, it was my fault to begin with. But so, at least now with me uploading them, they nothing nothing should go wrong. Um, anything else, Dad? I'm fucking retarded, and I misused this fucking microphone. Why you say that? I'm supposed to be facing this direction. This is the reason why I don't pick me up and why I picked you up so fine. Oh. Because it's not even supposed to be picking up sound from the side. And this is why I'm actually really low volume. And after this whole entire time, I've actually just sat here and bothered to read the pamphlet. Ah. Well, that well, that's from the episode two. Yep. This has been the new hobby shop. And I'm Philip. And I'm Don. And we'll see you next time.